Hello fellow dog fanciers! Welcome back or welcome if you're new to this channel. I know you cannot see any whippets around me at the moment, even Lacey is not here, but don't worry because you will see a lot of clips of my dogs throughout this entire video. I'm quite excited about the topic today because I'm going to discuss some of the most common behaviors seen in whippets and I'm also going to um, answer some of the questions that most uh, soon-to-be whippet owners usually have. Of course, I will not be able to cover everything, but I will cover some major topics. Before we get into the video, you can leave a comment into the comment section asking any questions that might concern you regarding whippets or dogs in general, or if you have a whippet, you can brag about that there as well. Also, if you are not subscribed yet, you can do so now so that you don't miss any hound content and any hot topics that will be coming up. Let's get into the video. So one of the most common misconceptions out there is that whippets need a lot of exercise and that is true to some extent. However, despite their lean and fit body structure, they tend to be very lazy. They are capable of sleeping the whole day which makes them fantastic multi-purpose dogs because as much as they can be very active and they like exercise and they like to be involved in activities, they love to sleep. So on these cold rainy days when you really don't feel like going on a long walk, the good news is they don't feel like it either. On the other hand, of course, they need exercise. Let's not forget their sidehounds, they're well known for their speed, so they need to invest this energy somewhere, whether that would be uh, you taking them out for a run in the field or a very long walk or engaging into some mental exercise like teaching them new tricks, uh, giving them new tasks, um, this is very necessary for the whippet and for any other dog for that matter. Another thing that whippets are very well known for is that they love heat. If you have a garden or a sunny spot in your house, you will very often see them laying in the sun until they are almost overheated. The same thing goes for if you have a fireplace. They love to lay in front of the fireplace and collecting a lot of heat. And believe me, sometimes it might look very scary to you as an owner because you often have to remind them to move away from that warm spot. At some point they would really look like they're struggling to breathe even, but they will not do anything about it. They'll just continue laying where they're laying because they actually really love it. With that said, if you think that your dog has had enough of sunlight or enough of that uh, fire heat, just distract them with something else, move them to another spot because they know no boundaries. Another thing is they do not smell. And by they do not smell, I mean no, no smell at all. They tend to extract the smells from their surroundings. For example, if you're wearing a lot of perfume and you cuddle a whippet uh, for the rest of the day, that whippet is going to smell like perfume. If you have just washed your bed sheets and your whippets lay there, they will smell like laundry softener for the rest of the day. And the same goes with bad smells. If they play with stinky dogs, they will smell like stinky dogs afterwards. Do whippets shed? Yes, they do, but it's quite easy to solve that problem by brushing them often. You could use a rubber brush um, that is meant for uh, short-haired dogs. You could also use a rubber brush that is meant for horses. Or what we like to do is we use gardening gloves. But when you use gardening gloves, uh, look for ones that have a sticky layer because there are some that have a more like a plasticky looking layer that will not have a grip on the hair and will not really do much 
uh, for shedding. So just choose for those that are rather sticky. Another commonly asked question, are whippets stupid and are they easy to be trained? First of all, whippets are not stupid. Whippets are some of the smartest dogs I have ever seen and I have worked with a variety of dogs in my lifetime. They are smart, they can read your mind and they use it to their own advantage. They're not working dogs and they will not look you in the eye waiting for the next task that you're going to give them. So if you've had a golden retriever or an Australian shepherd before or a dog that really likes to work, don't expect the same behaviors from your whippet because you will never see the same willingness to work or if you do, it's going to be very rarely. Be prepared with a lot of patience and treats and never take it personal when the training doesn't work out as fast as you expected. Whippets and for that matter, sighthounds are very independent dogs, meaning that they have a mind of their own and they want to do what they want at their own time. A little bit like cats actually. So instead of looking and expecting what you want from them, um, they will look at you uh, wondering what can you do for them. So you will have to find a way to work around that and actually use it at your advantage and find the right stimulus. With that said, they're very food driven as I probably mentioned already and when they like a certain type of food, they are obsessed with it. So as much as they can be slim, you have to watch out for that because some whippets tend to get overweight. People ask, are whippets cuddly? Yes, they are very cuddly and in fact they're some of the cuddliest dogs ever. Whether you want to sit on the couch and watch TV with a blanket over you, you will most probably have to share that blanket with your whippet. And let's not forget bedtime, we often are woken up in the middle of the night because someone wants to get under the sheets and they need some extra help. Whippets also love other whippets, they benefit from each other's company and actually life with um, a bunch of whippets or more than one whippet is very colorful and they communicate in such funny ways. So if you wonder whether you should get a second whippet, yes and yes. Now let's talk a little bit about socialization. Socializing from a very early age is crucial for whippets as much as it is for all kinds of dogs, of course. However, whippets are not physically fragile, but they're mentally fragile and they tend to become antisocial if they're not socialized properly. So start early, go to parks, let them meet other dogs and people, go to busy places, don't worry that you will stress your dog out. The more the better, they will be bulletproof mentally as they grow up. So all that brings me to the next topic. Whippets are very sensitive and very easily offended. Sometimes you will not even understand what inflicted that kind of drama on your dog and why they behave normally on one, one moment and the next moment they become moody, completely unwilling to do whatever. Well, that is indeed because whippets are very sensitive and little things that we don't see, they take it personal and they see it bigger than we do. Of course, I don't have a footage of that because I'm not going to inflict any stress on my dogs. But if you remember uh, my life with seven dogs video, I mentioned that Lacey eats apart from everyone. Well, that's because once upon a time, while she was still eating with the rest, someone stuck her nose in her bowl. And ever since she decided that if someone looks at her feeding bowl, she will refuse to eat overall. It might come as a shocker to some of you, but yes indeed, many people ask, can I teach my whippet to stay off the furniture? If you get a whippet with the intention to keep it off the furniture, um, please get another dog or try to make peace with the fact that that's a game that you're never going to win. 
or if you're that kind of a partner who most probably came after the dog and you're kind of irritated that you have to share your bed and couch with the whippet, two tips for you. One, don't pick up that topic and two, give up because you will not achieve anything. The only thing that might happen is you ending up sleeping on the floor. So whippets are not really fragile, however, you have to consider that they are prone to some injuries. They have thin skin and for those that let them uh, run in a forest, it's not uncommon for their whippets to get some uh, skin injuries that might end up needing stitches. And for whippets that run uh, on big fields, Sometimes they can injure a toe or break a toenail very badly, so just keep that in mind. Now let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite topics. Is there a behavioral difference between male and female whippets? Of course, everything is individual and what I'm going to say here, it's not a rule that applies to every single dog. But most of my experience shows that males are the more happy-go-lucky kind of dogs. They are more cuddly in the sense that if we ask to cuddle them, they will not mind at all. And they're also a little bit more easier to train because they tend to focus more on you, just because of this uh, happy side of them. Females, on the other side, are the typical, stereotypical women. They get moody for what you would say no reason, however, they have a very good reason to be moody. They like to cuddle, but they want to set the rules. If they don't want it, they don't want it and you have nothing to do about it. They have to want it and then you have the cuddliest dog ever. They also have the occasional mood swings when Yesterday they have loved the food that they eat and today they just hate it, what is this and how dare you give it to them. Or you go to the park, everything is nice and happy and they think that some other dog looked at them wrong and that's it, they want to go home. And last but not least, I want to cover the very commonly asked questions, can whippets and small animals live together? According to some, that's not possible at all because whippets are selected to run after, hunt down, uh, catch little prey. And most commonly, that would be rabbits. And of course, whippets have a prey drive, so when they see a small fluffy animal, uh, first instinct is to catch it. That, of course, is not always the case because we have almost always had Persian cats, rabbits, hamsters, and now we have rats. My whippets have perfectly lived together with all small animals without ever uh, having to fear for the safety of these small animals. Of course, there is a lot of training involved and it's always easier where, for example, the cat was the first in that family and the whippet comes second. In that case, you can be almost certain that a cat is going to be a cat and it will take the leadership position. With animals that t tend to not be able to defend themselves like rabbits, hamsters, squirrels, yes, that's, that's a thing, people have them as pets, rats, I would not leave them unattended, of course, I would always be there to supervise. Now, for example, the only reason our whippets uh, do not really have this close touch uh, with the rats is rather because I'm afraid that the rats are going to bite the whippets because I've seen it several times. Every time a whippet takes a nose into the cage of the rats, it gets bitten on the nose. So it will probably take a little while before I include a video of my rats and my whippets interacting closely. So if you worry to get a whippet because you have a small animal, um, don't worry, get the whippet, everything is going to be fine. Great, and right at the end of the video I figured out the lightning is very bad, but anyway, better later than never. So this was it for today, these were some major topics that I know people wonder about, of course I could not include everything because this video will take hours and it's fairly long already. So that was all for today, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Friday with another video. Bye-bye.